Hey everyone, my name is Tommy Reynolds and in this tutorial I'm going to show you five different ways that you can reposition your single softbox to create really dramatic and interesting results for your clients every single time. So the softbox we're going to be using in today's tutorial is the 150 centimeter easy open softbox by a Pixapro. And this is my go-to softbox when I'm in controlled studio environments. It's an incredibly versatile softbox. I really, really love it. A lot of people think that you actually need more than one light to get a good photo and that really isn't the case. A lot of photographers, just their entire career is just based on using a single softbox and that's absolutely fine. You can easily get away with that and hopefully these five variations you can try if you've never tried them. The first one we're going to look at though is my go-to which is the 45 degree angle. So as the name suggests, the 45 degree angle is 45 degrees left or right and then looking down on the subject at a 45 degree angle when you tilt the, um, the head down so it's kind of this sort of shape here. And the reason why this is my go-to is it's just personal preference. I love it. I, it gives you a nice highlight and shadow ratio. It's not front on which would give you a shadowless face so just coming at it from a nice angle gives a really nice contrast to the image and it's also called uh, Rembrandt lighting which is made famous obviously by Rembrandt because it gives you this kind of triangle shape on the side of the face which isn't lit because the the uh, the light is just carrying over and creating that kind of triangle shape as I say on the unlit side of the face and that is a lot of my work. Even when I go abroad, it's always my go-to. I'll ask my assistant to always um, go to a 45 degree angle. It's a really good starting point if you're just starting out in off-camera flash. So that would be option number one, the 45 degree angle. So for our next setup, I wanted to use the grid that comes with this softbox. And if you've never used the grid before, it kind of channels the light forward and it doesn't spread left and right up and down as much. So it's kind of more of a focused light. Because it's still double diffused though, it, you still get the same amount of softness, it's just more channeled forward. So that was the first thing I did. And then the next angle was putting it at a roughly 70 degree angle. So for that, we angled the light downwards and then lifted the light even higher than it was before. Kind of like almost a top down light, like it was looking down on top of Sam, our model. And this is a great way if you want to create even more shadows and to create an even, even more of a moody look. Now you do have to be a bit more conscious with this. Because the light is so high, that means that it's so easy for Sam's face to just fall into shadow, for her eyes and for her mouth to just fall into shadow. So that's why most of these shots I was consciously telling Sam to keep her chin high so that her face was looking up towards the light. Otherwise, if she was looking down, it would just be into complete shadow. So when you are working with more contrasted light, like a grid or when it's up at a really obscure angle, you've really got to be a bit more critical where your subject is looking. So for this, just ask your model to keep her chin nice and high and you get a nice exposure. Another kind of tip off of this one is if you want the background even darker, then simply move the model and the light further away from the background. That way the light won't hit the background and expose it. So if you want that background darker, just move your model and the light away from the background as you can see in this example. So that would be option number two, the 70 degree angle. So for our third setup, we took the grid off and then we moved the softbox around to the side of Sam. And as the name suggests, this is side lighting. Now, because the light is lighting Sam from the side, if I'd have just had Sam literally looking directly at the camera, half of the face would have been lit and half would have been in shadow. If that's the look you want to go for, then that's absolutely fine. But for this, I again, like the last one where I had Sam looking up towards the light, this time I had Sam kind of turned towards the light so that it would light most of her body rather than just half of her body, if that makes sense. So for this one, it looks kind of cool. It creates a different type of shadow on the face. This is why moving your light just really can create all sorts of different types of shadows and different looks. So it really is all about experimenting and it really does make a difference when you just have them look here versus here. 
you really do get a completely different look. So sometimes you don't have to change your position or the lights position. Sometimes you just simply have to have the model just look 45 degrees and that can totally change the look and feel of the image. So for our fourth setup, we use a technique called clamshell lighting. And it's called that because using a reflector, uh, you are literally clamming the person inside of that little space. So using the softbox at a roughly 45 degree angle, but this time straight on, you use a reflector to position underneath and that's gonna fill in the shadows. So the softbox is gonna fill the top of the face really beautifully and then the reflector is going to bounce that light from that softbox and fill in all of the shadows underneath the chin and the eyes to create a really, really nice look. You can even use it if you're doing a tutorial video and you're using it here. So that's what it looks like without, but when you clamshell, even works if you're doing video, but you didn't know that, <laughs> maybe you did. Anyway, this would be one of my go-tos if I'm doing headshots. It creates a really beautiful light. You can get really nice and tight in and you'll be able to see really cool catch lights in the eyes. So that would be my fourth option, clamshell lighting. So for our fifth and final setup, we moved the softbox behind sand to create a kind of a silhouette effect. So no light is actually hitting the front of Sam. Everything is coming directly from behind. So for the posing, we had Sam kind of turned to the side so that we can see the shape of her face. Because if she was facing forward, we wouldn't see any shape to the face because it would just be a black hole, if that makes sense. So get your model to turn to the side so that they can maybe play with their hair or create some movements of the arms as you can see in these examples here. So you can create a really cool silhouette type effect. So that would be option number five, which is backlighting. Well, that's about it. Thanks ever so much for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, then please make sure you hit that like or share button or subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. And as always, I will see you again next time. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.